Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to exciting archaeology news. Today, we embark on a fascinating journey into the mystery surrounding the Great Pyramid basalt pavement and its profound impact on ancient technology. Join us as we delve into the complexities of ancient craftsmanship, exploring the enigmatic S-cuts and discernible signs of workmanship on the basal, and unraveling the secrets that lie beneath the sands of time. But before we delve into this captivating exploration, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button to stay tuned for more riveting tales from the past. On the eastern flank of the Great Pyramid, attention is inevitably drawn to the captivating basal pavement. These stones, remnants of Khufu's mortuary temple, may have faced the same fate as the pyramid's casing stones, removed or even destroyed long ago. The basal blocks, once gracing the central expanse on the pyramid's eastern side, once paved the grand court of the temple, where imposing limestone walls housed 38 granite pillars. During the 1930s excavation by Selim Hassan, remnants of these pillars, mostly square but some rectangular, were unearthed, leaving behind visible imprints of their former positions. Khufu's temple boasted a striking black basal floor, complemented by red granite pillars and adorned with likely colorful reliefs on its white limestone walls. A spectacle lost to time, leaving us only with the enduring basal pavement, a focal point for proponents of a forgotten ancient high technology in Egypt. The robust basal rock with discernible cut marks prompts inquiries into its creation. How were these stones hewn and shaped? Were such feats achievable with the materials and technology available in that era? Does the basal pavement conceal untold ancient secrets, reflecting the challenges of its craftsmanship? The mysterious allure of this pavement invites contemplation into the intricacies of its origin and the potential mysteries it holds. In ancient Egypt, basal, a volcanic rock, played a pivotal role in construction. Initially used for small vessels in the late pre-dynastic period, its monumental application emerged during the Old Kingdom, gracing pavements and pyramid temples. Djoser's Third Dynasty Step Pyramid yielded fragments of basal paving, a trend extended to the Great Pyramid of the Fourth Dynasty and the Fifth Dynasty Pyramids of Userkaf, Sahur, Neferefra, and Nusere. Though versatile in application, basal found prominence as a paving stone. The mystery deepens as to why basal became a preferred choice. Some speculate its dark color symbolized the life-giving Nile mud linked to the god Geb. This enduring choice persisted until the first intermediate period, marking the end of the Old Kingdom. The significance of basal comes to light due to its hardness, distinguishing it from soft sedimentary rocks like limestone. Transported to necropolis sites, its utilization presented formidable challenges. The means of transportation, whether over land or through the Nile, remains unclear. Scholars argue that Old Kingdom Egyptians faced difficulties effectively working in basal with the available technology and tools, evident in the intricate S-cuts. Delving into basal pavements from a geological perspective, it becomes evident that basal is an extrusive volcanic rock characterized by a fine-grained crystalline texture formed by rapid cooling of molten rock. Exploring this geological aspect unravels the complexities behind the ancient Egyptians' utilization of basal in their architectural endeavors. The composition of the rock varies across sources, impacting its hardness and durability. Natural outcrops of basal, found throughout Egypt, weather swiftly due to the instability of minerals in colder, wetter conditions. Despite weathering making the rock easier to work with, it compromises the finish. The quarry sought for the Old Kingdom must have been sizable to pave numerous temples with basal. The Jebel Katrani Formation, situated around 58 kilometers from Giza, stands out as the only evidence of Old Kingdom quarrying on a large scale for basal. This formation comprises three basaltic lava flows, with the middle layer, about 15 meters thick, being dense and less weathered, the ideal choice for construction. The rock exhibits natural fractures, simplifying the quarrying process. At Jebel Katrani, two Old Kingdom quarries, labeled East and West, have been identified. Abundant Old Kingdom pottery shards have been discovered in these locations. Workers accessed unweathered stone by excavating 3 to 5 meters below the original surface and 5 to 10 meters back into the hillside. The naturally fractured basal allowed workers to wedge out chunks using levers. Examining the quarry reveals blocks no larger than 2 meters, consistent with the Old Kingdom temple blocks, such as those at the Khufu Mortuary Temple. 
These blocks, around 70 centimeters long and 40 centimeters thick, feature internal fractures mirroring those in natural rock at the quarry. Geologist James Harold meticulously studied the quarry, affirming that the rock mirrored the basal employed at Giza, Saqqara, and Abu Rawash. Petrographic analysis, a key revelation, unveiled the specific mineral composition not previously discussed online. The primary constituents of the Great Pyramid Basal are Labradorite, Orite, and Volcanic Glass, accompanied by trace amounts of Hornblende, Olivine, Quartz, and Apatite. Notably, the ground mass constituating the bulk comprises grains smaller than one millimeter with visible weathering, evident in the partial devitrification of the glass. The rock, upon mineralogical and chemical scrutiny, aligns with the classification of normal basal. Contrary to assumptions, this particular basal variant, prevalent in Old Kingdom pyramid temples, proves relatively easy to work. Cleaving along natural fractures yields flat surfaces suitable for pavement, minimizing manual shaping. While the rock's edges require refinement for precise fitting, the flat surface potentially corresponds to its natural fracture planes. Observations include cut marks and soaring striations, prompting inquiry into the cutting techniques for this formidable rock. Geologically, hardness is not inherently assigned to specific rocks due to their diverse compositions. The Mohs scale, typically applicable to minerals, ranks scratch resistance. In the realm of rocks, such characterization proves challenging, giving their aggregate nature. However, an approximate hardness can be deduced based on source and mineral composition. In the case of the Great Pyramid's basal, Labradorite, Orite, and partially weathered volcanic glass dominate. Effective tools like flint and cheer, both with a hardness of 7, were most likely used to cut and shape the basal. Quartz sand, also ranking 7 on the Mohs scale when combined with water, served as another efficient cutting agent. Egyptians could employ copper saws or drills along with abrasives like crushed quartz and garnet, both scoring 7 on the Mohs scale. Moreover, the potential use of emery, an often overlooked material with a hardness ranging from 8 to 9, could revolutionize our understanding of ancient stoneworking. Emery, significantly more abrasive than quartz, offers an efficient and swift method for cutting and finishing the Egyptian basal. With an absolute hardness two to four times greater than quartz, the utilization of emery might unveil a lost ancient technology in the realm of stoneworking. In retrospect, emery emerges as a crucial element, possibly holding the key to many unanswered questions in ancient craftsmanship. In the ancient world, emery, a dark granular rock rich in corundum and other minerals like root spinels, played a crucial role in stone manufacturing. Its use dates back to at least the 4th millennium BC, as evidenced by discoveries in locations such as Cites during the Neolithic period. Even in Minoan Knossos, around 1600 BC, emery powder adhered to stone remnants, highlighting its application in waste products from stone manufacturing. Returning to Giza, where the basal is situated, the shaping and cutting of quartz sand or crushed quartz, aided by copper tools and water, was a feasible process. However, the incorporation of emery would have significantly expedited these tasks. Considering the established use of emery in the Mediterranean and Near East since the 4th millennium BC, it is plausible that Old Kingdom Egyptians, with their extensive trade networks, were aware of its properties. The challenge lies in the absence of direct evidence in Old Kingdom contexts, partially due to limited exploration and preservation efforts over the years. Yet, the potential influence of emery on the advanced craftsmanship of the Old Kingdom Egyptians remains a compelling aspect worthy of further investigation. In the mysterious tale of the Great Pyramid's construction, the origin of the abrasive material used remains a mystery. Whether locally sourced from Egypt's sole corundum deposit in the eastern desert or imported from the ancient emery-rich lands of the Cyclades, the specifics elude us. Emery, a known abrasive since the 4th millennium BC, played a crucial role in ancient civilizations, raising questions about its potential use in the pyramid's creation. Recent findings shed light on Egypt's active trade with the Cyclades during the 4th dynasty. Notably, in the tomb of King Khufu's mother, bracelets were unearthed, their detailed analysis revealing a composition consistent with cycladic ores, silver, silver chloride, and traces of copper chloride. 
These artifacts unveil a captivating link between Egypt and the Emery Rich Isles, hinting at a plausible importation of the abrasive material for pyramid construction. Yet, even if Emery proves absent, the resilient quartz sand could have been employed to carve the distinctive basal rock. Examining the eastern side pavement of the Great Pyramid, the craftsmanship appears less extraordinary and more reminiscent of haphazard paving. Recent images expose the raw and irregular cutting of the salt, challenging the romanticized notion of ancient Egyptian precision. However, a crucial caveat emerges. The pavement stands largely reconstructed, concealing the true nature of its original form. A glimpse into the 1930s reveals a vastly different landscape, with only a few blocks in their original positions and others scattered in a seemingly disorganized arrangement. The 2023 footage exposes a mosaic of blocks, bound together by random cementing, an intricate puzzle pieced together, guided perhaps more by educated guesses than historical accuracy. The absence of documented records on the pavement's reconstruction leaves room for speculation, prompting contemplation on whether some blocks were reshaped to align with the envisioned footprint of the ancient Moor Temple, rendering certain cuts suspiciously modern in appearance. In unraveling the mysteries of the basal pavement, the blurred line between historical reconstruction and authenticity underscores the challenges of peering into the past. As we scrutinize these remnants, the intricate dance between fact and conjecture invites us to reconsider the narrative woven by time and human hands, questioning the true essence of this ancient architectural marvel. In the journey through Egypt earlier this year, inquiries within the tour group revolved around the enigmatic S-cuts and discernible signs of craftsmanship on the basal. The lingering question pondered the origins of these marks. Were they the handiwork of a royal stonemason from the 3rd millennium BC, or a more recent endeavor in the 1940s, utilizing modern tools? The answer eludes us, leaving a historical enigma. The Arabs, in their quest for stone beneath, dismantled the pavement, repurposing some basal blocks to delineate a rudimentary road along the eastern slope of the pyramid. The basal pavement at the Khufu Temple emerges as the paramount example of ancient stone-cutting prowess. With a rock registering 6 to 6.5 on the Mohs scale, the use of quartz sand and a metal saw becomes evident. Emery, if employed, would expedite the process. Notably, large faces likely followed zones of inherent weaknesses, requiring minimal cutting. Ancient technology, a complex study, remains obscured by the passage of time, with only the material's availability and workability certain. While the answers remain elusive, low-budget tests by independent researchers provide glimpses into ancient stoneworking possibilities. The feasibility of cutting granite with primitive tools and abrasives, as demonstrated in these experiments, hints at the potential capabilities of ancient Egyptians. Their mastery, refined over centuries, suggests a capacity to scale their operations, especially given the softer nature of Old Kingdom basal in comparison to granite. Acknowledging the financial constraints hindering a comprehensive understanding, it becomes apparent that ancient stoneworking's intricacies may forever elude us. The juxtaposition of old and new images of the basal pavement, despite its reconstructed nature, maintains its allure as a tourist attraction. The quest for ancient stoneworking secrets persists, urging an analysis of in situ stones from the original excavation. Stones that may hold the key to unraveling the mysteries of Old Kingdom basal craftsmanship. And with that, we conclude our enthralling journey through the mysterious world of the Great Pyramid basalt pavement and the intricate mysteries it unveils about ancient technology. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button to stay tuned for more captivating explorations into the wonders of history. Join us as we continue our ongoing adventure through the sands of time, unearthing hidden gems and questioning the narratives woven by the hands of time and human history. Stay curious, dear viewers, as we delve deeper into the ancient world, piecing together the puzzle of our shared past. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep the flame of curiosity burning bright.